Hey, what's up everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Welcome to the Part-Time Pilot YouTube channel. Today's video is gonna be another helpful one for those student pilots out there, getting you familiar with all the equipment on the aircraft. Uh, let's get right into it. Um, here is the general, uh, the general body of the aircraft. So the the fuselage is is the body that contains you know the engine, uh, the passengers, the pilot, the cockpit, all that stuff. That's the body. That's the fuselage. Okay, the cockpit is obviously again the the area inside that can house human beings. Uh, so that's got uh, you know the pilot, the passengers. And then even um, back here, there's usually some room for baggage, uh, so that would be the cockpit. And then you have you have the windows here on the sides, and then the windshield here on the front. Um, right here, uh, in front of the instrument panel, right in front of the windshield, in front of the pilots, is the engine cowling. So the engine cowling is the skin of the aircraft here that uh shrouds and goes around uh the engine so the engine actually sits in here right in front of the pilot and behind uh the propeller here so that's where the engine sits and then you'll have a door that actually opens up uh that you can look in there you can check the uh, you can check all the in engine instrumentation uh the battery uh the alternator stuff like that uh during your pre-flight check so that's where the engine sits and then right behind the engine uh there's a wall uh and this is called the firewall uh and this protects the cabin or the cockpit from a fire engine fire and this firewall uh right here is the datum uh that is used or the reference line that is used uh in your weight and balance uh, so th basically they measure the arms of all the positions. They measure those distances uh, from this firewall that sits right behind the engine. Uh, so that's just a, a fun fact. Uh, the wings, obviously, we have a right wing and a left wing. Um, those are pretty obvious. And then we have a uh, horizontal stabilizer or stabilator. We'll get into the differences between those uh, but the, the reason why they have the word stability in it stabilizer or stable later is because that is the main purpose of this horizontal lifting surface it does create lift not as much as the wings because it's not as big but it creates lift and keeps this tail elevated and provides stability for the aircraft and then uh, finally we have the vertical stabilizer uh, here which is the vertical part of the tail. So the, so this whole, both the horizontal and the vertical part are considered the tail. Okay, now um, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks are in uh, the wings. So you store fuel in, in the right wing as well as the left wing. And then you have the fuel cap. You can see it uh, right here uh, on both wings. The fuel cap that allows you to put fuel in and it also provides a vent at the top and then there's also a vent on the bottom of each tank uh, that allows uh, the fuel vapor to vent out so you don't get any dangerous conditions inside that fuel tank and then here is kind of a little schematic so you have a tank here this is just a conceptualized view and then that flows down into a fuel tank selector valve, so you can select which wing tank you're going to source fuel from. And then it comes down, it, it goes through a fuel strainer, a gas galator, or, or stuff like that. And then into the engine carburetor, and then finally into the engine, which would sit right here. And then if you want more details on the fuel system, uh, just check out the video up this popping up right here. We uh, go into great detail uh, for you on that. All right, so continuing on uh, for more equipment, we have our landing gear uh, here. So this is a, you know, a nose wheel system. If we had a tail wheel, we would have a, we would have no nose wheel here, but we would have one back here uh, for the tail wheel. But this is a nose wheel, um, and then uh, so this this gear right here and the one on the other side, those are called the main gear, and then then this one right up here up front on the nose is called the nose gear the nose gear can turn uh to the left or to the right and it's controlled by the rudder pedals inside the cockpit uh that the pilot controls uh so when the pilot uh uses the left rudder 
uh, pedal, uh, the, the nose wheel will steer to the left. And then when it uses the right, it'll steer to the right. That's, that's how you steer during taxi. Uh, so the nose wheel is steer, steerable. Uh, the main gear are fixed. They are not steerable. And then on top, you'll see on this aircraft, uh, you have these like shrouds or cowling around the wheels. Uh, so these are called wheel fairings. And what these do is they reduce the amount of drag on the landing gear, uh, making a more uh, efficient aircraft gear system. So not listed on here, but I, I just want to mention it is the propeller. So it's spinning here, so you can't really see it. Some uh, general aviation aircraft have two blades, while others have uh, three blades. Um, you can even find four blades in some aircraft, but uh, most general aviation are just going to have two blades. And uh, yeah, so that's the propeller. All right, moving on, we're going to talk about uh, antennas. So up here on top of the fuselage, you're probably going to find two antennas sticking uh, straight up and a little bit uh, to the aft of the aircraft. And these are your comm antennas So you uh, for your common nav radio. So if you have two radios, common nav radios, you're going to find two antennas on top of your fuselage. And then you're also going to find another uh, antenna. It's usually a little bit smaller or shorter, but it's on top of the fuselage near the comm antennas. And this is the ELT antenna. And then uh, on the vertical tail, you're going to have some antennas that kind of... Uh, point towards the back or the rear of the aircraft and these are going to be your VOR antennas they're usually found on the vertical tail uh, pretty high near the top and then finally uh, you can't see it in this picture we'll look at it in the next picture but the transponder antennas are usually found underneath the fuselage um, also you'll find uh, DME uh, antennas uh, usually on the bottom of the fuselage uh, so if we look here uh, we have, looks like a transponder antenna uh, here, and it's in this little uh, shroud or, or fin uh, to be aerodynamic. And then this one looks like uh, that's for the DME. Um, so DME, oops, DME and transponder uh, antennas right there. Um, and then also on this aircraft here, there's a little bit more uh, detail that we can see. Um, here, this looks like a, a ELT antenna. You see the comm antennas here. And then we have our VOR antennas here. Now you're also gonna see these things that kind of stick off, stick out of the wing, and then also the tail. Uh, what are these? These are static discharge wicks. Um, so when air flows over the aircraft, uh, it creates friction with the skin of the aircraft, and if they have charge, it can build up static electricity, um, and it can create a electrical hazard uh, with your equipment. What these do is they, they make the electricity uh, basically go out and exit the aircraft. And you'll find uh, a lot of these on big aircraft as well. And uh, fun fact, even on big aircraft, they'll have metal strips uh, that go down the entire aircraft and then have a wick going off uh, in case they get struck by lightning uh, that the, the electricity will flow all the way through the aircraft and then out the back. All right, so moving on, uh, now we're kind of looking at this from more of a bird's eye view to get a good image of the wings and what's on the back of the wings and these are the control surfaces. So you have some control surfaces here and then you have some control surfaces here uh, on the more outer part of the wing. So you have the, these green ones here on the inside, and then you have the blue here on the outside. Uh, the green inner control surfaces are the flaps. In this image, the flaps are deployed down, and then the ailerons are not uh, deflected up or down, and the ailerons are the blue ones, oops, sorry, are the blue here on the outside of the wing. Ailerons work opposite of one another. So when one aileron is deflected down, the other is deflected up. Uh, that way you get more lift on the side of uh, the aileron that's deflected down, and then less lift on the aileron on the side that's deflected up, and then vice versa if you want to turn the other way. But what this does is it creates more lift on one side and, and it allows the aircraft to turn. 
All right, so now let's talk about the tail. So we have uh, the vertical tail here and then the horizontal tail. The vertical tail has a control surface on the back of it here outlined in blue, and this is called the rudder. The rudder can deflect uh, to the left, which would be uh, into this picture, or to the right, which would be at us uh, in this picture. Uh, and this is controlled by the rudder pedals. The rudder controls yaw just like in a boat, and uh, it's controlled by the rudder pedals. And this is and that's on the vertical stabilizer. On the horizontal stabilizer, we have another surface that can deflect up and down and uh, control the amount of lift on the tail. And this is called the elevator. And the elevator is controlled by the yoke. When you push in and push out on the yoke, it controls the elevator, which again creates more or less lift on the tail and controls your pitch, the pitch of the aircraft. So when you have more lift on the tail, the nose will pitch down. When you have less lift on the tail, the nose will pitch up. Um, so here in this situation, we have a horizontal stabilizer that is fixed. It does not move. And then we have a rudder that can go up and down, or sorry, a elevator that can go up and down on the back, the aft side of the horizontal stabilizer. On some aircraft, the entire horizontal stabilizer is a moving surface, is a control surface. And this is called a stabilator. So this is when the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator are combined, so a stabilator. So when a pilot pulls uh, back on the yoke or pushes forward on the yoke, the whole entire horizontal tail deflects up and down, controlling, again, the pitch. It has the same effect as the elevator. It's just a little bit different in that the whole entire horizontal tail moves rather than just the back of it. Here we have another, we have a view of a Skyhawk, which shows a pretty good view. Uh, so what is this horizontal tail? This is not a stabilator. Is it a it's a horizontal stabilizer, which is fixed right here with a elevator which deflects downwards and now if you look at here you're gonna see another outline of another control surface uh, so this control surface is called the trim tab and what the trim tab is for and it's, uh, it's controlled by the trim wheel inside uh, the cockpit by the pilot and this deflects again up or down and it reduces the amount of workload for a pilot. Like let's say you, uh, to fly straight and level or to get the attitude you want, you have to uh, be constantly pulling back on the yoke. Instead of doing that, all you have to do is move the trim tab enough so that you don't have to put in any work to hold that attitude. So that's what the trim tab is for. Uh, and it's found on the aft side of the rudder or the stabilator. Okay, now a uh, couple more things. Let's talk about the lights. All right, so you have uh, three main types of lights. You have landing lights, position lights, and anti-collision lights. So the first thing we'll talk about is the landing lights. They're usually right here under the nose cap of the propeller. Uh, you can kind of see it right there and provides lights for landing. Sometimes on some aircraft you'll get landing lights here on the wings as well. The next lights we'll talk about is position lights. You have a position light on the right wing tip, you have a position light on the left wing tip, and then you have a position light on the uh, vertical tail and uh, we'll get into why those are different colors. Uh, the vertical tail one facing backwards is white uh, the one on the left wing tip facing to the left is red, and the one on the right wing tip is green and faces to the right. These are position lights. They allow other traffic at night to tell which way you're traveling in reference to them based off the color. Okay, and finally, we have an anti-collision light. Uh, this The anti-collision light has to be red or white, and it has to be flashing, and it has to be omnidirectional. Omnidirectional means that it has to be seen in all directions. Uh, so here, because it has to be seen in all directions, it's usually on the very, the highest point of the aircraft, so the top of the vertical tail. As you can see, this little red light here, and uh, it is visible in all directions. And this one, in this case, it's red, 
and uh, it has to be flashing. So this would be a red flashing omnidirectional light. That's the anti-collision light. Uh, here's a little zoomed in view of the anti-collision light. Here is a zoomed in view of a position light on, in this case, the left wing tip. And here's a little diagram uh, on the aircraft showing where the different position lights can be visible. So the ones on the wingtips can be visible of a span of 110 degrees. Um, and as you can see, the right uh, position light is green and it can be seen uh, just in this, in this area here. Uh, so that allows uh, aircraft that are in this span to be able to see the green light. And then uh, the left one, which is red, can be seen in this, this area. And then the one in the back can be seen in a span of 140 degrees and can be seen here in this area. And that again allows, if you see the white light, you know that the aircraft's traveling away from you. And if you see the red light, you know that the aircraft is traveling from the right to the left. And if you see the, the green, it's, it's the opposite. I think I said that right. Um, but if you saw green, you'd be over here and the aircraft would be traveling this way. So you can judge at night which direction it's going. Okay, uh, here we are a couple more things. Uh, we wanna talk about the pitot probe and the static port. So these are the pitot static system. This is how you collect uh, both the pitot and the static air for use in your instrumentations. Uh, like your altimeter and your airspeed indicator. Uh, so you have a pitot probe here. Uh, this is a probe that faces directly into the free stream air and is found just underneath, usually the left wing. It can be on the right wing as well, it doesn't matter. Uh, but usually just underneath and facing right into the free stream air. Static ports are going to be found on the side of the fuselage. Uh, and you'll definitely have one. You might have another one and it might be on the other side. Uh, but the reason they're on the side is because you don't want the free stream air, you want the static air. Uh, so that way the, air, the free stream air flows by and you just pick up the static air inside uh, the boundary layer. And then um, uh, right here, this little diagram shows you an uh, alternate static source. So if your static ports on the outside get clogged while you're flying, uh, you have here's some possible locations depending on the aircraft of where you might be able to activate uh, a static, an alternate or backup static source so that your instruments still work. And then here's a, here's a quick diagram of uh, a pitot static probe. And the reason I put this in here is because there could be a pitot probe, uh, which just collects uh, pitot free stream air here in this uh, inlet here, or there's a pitot static probe, which um, collects pitot free ram air in this port of the, at the front, but also has ports on the side right here, which collects static air as well. So sometimes you have more static sources on your pitot static probe itself. That's called a pitot static. If it doesn't have static sources, it'll just be a pitot probe. All right, guys, that's it. That is the overview of aircraft equipment on the outside of the aircraft. Uh, tune in, uh, make sure you subscribe because of the next couple videos I'm gonna make uh, is we're gonna go under the engine cowling inside the engine to talk about what you need to look at in the engine and how to identify those different engine parts during your pre-flight check. And then the next video, we're gonna go inside the cockpit and we're gonna talk about the different instruments and the instrument panels, talk about radios and stuff like that. Uh, so be sure to uh, subscribe and get the notifications for when I upload those videos. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I uh, got some good information out of it. If you have any questions, as always, please comment below.